A red coat square line battle musket formation is under threat from a new enemy. That would be the French bayonet units that are going to be charging nearly 3 million strong against 270,000 redcoats. But of course, the redcoats aren't alone in this battle. They have two reinforcing legions marching on the battlefield, trying to flank the charging bayonet soldiers and bring relief to the musket square. We'll see if they can do it in time, or if they will die trying. What's up gamers, I'm here to tell you about Instant Gaming. Instant Gaming is an amazing place where you can get some fire deals on all sorts of video games. Uh, seriously, it's like 60 to 95% off as you can see here. Uh, these are all of the Star Wars titles they have. They literally have every Star Wars title. Uh, you can also get XCOM here, Men of War Assault Squad 2, all of the games I play on the channel you can buy here for extremely cheap prices. If you use my affiliate link in the description, it helps me out a ton. So, thank you guys for listening to this sponsorship and thank you to Instant Gaming for continuing to sponsor the channel. What's going on gamers? It's your boy Daily Tactics here and today we are back with some more Ultimate Epic Battle Simulator 2. I went into the unit creator and created a new unit. That would be the the French bayonet unit. Basically, these guys are actually a melee attack, so they have to get right up against these red coats in order to stab them with bayonets. So we have the initial sort of action over here as the flankers on this side engage with those French boys. And then the middle square is not currently under attack, but there's another French, uh, sorry, British Legion over here uh, flanking the French as well. And these guys are also currently getting into the mix of things. So it seems as though the French have decided to take on the flankers before they take on the main musket square. An interesting choice. I would just go ahead and eliminate the musket square first and then deal with the flankers as they come up to us. But hey, you know, to each their own. Either way, we should have the musket square. Yeah, there, there are some attackers going for the musket square. And it looks like one corner right now is in fact firing out at these French soldiers. So we're having some action here. Either way, guys, if you do enjoy this video, please be sure to hit that like button. It really does help support the channel out a lot. If we could get a thousand likes in the first 24 hours, that would be incredible. Subscribe if you haven't already. We're working our way towards the big 600k. And comment down below if you'd like to see some more in the future. Either way, you guys know I have my LEGO Daily Bricks channel. Well, some of you do. Um, and I had, I had a bit of a crazy idea to try and make a massive line battle out of Lego as well. It would require me buying obviously a ton of red coats as well as the uh, colonial blue coats I guess you could call them. Um, it, it would cost a, a pretty penny in order to do this but I think it could be kind of sick to make a massive Lego line battle. Um, of course the, the red coats are like pretty, they're like 15 bucks a minifig or something along those lines so it would cost a bit of money. Um, but I don't know. May maybe I would do that. What, what do you guys think? Could, could be kind of fun. Could be kind of fun. And honestly, just that idea kind of inspired me to do another red coat battle in Ultimate Epic Battle Simulator 2. Either way, right now the Musket Square is in fact getting charged on all sides by these bayonet-wielding hooligans right here. And uh, they're getting right up in there and they are starting to stab with their bayonets against these boys right here. And uh, starting to get a few kills on the musket square. I think the corners are going to be the most powerful areas because that's actually where two lines overlap, meaning there's double soldiers right there. Uh, and then, of course, the center is very jam packed with red coats as well, way back there. So that will be probably the second most deadly point of contention for this musket square. And this musket square does not need to win the battle. No. It simply needs to survive long enough that the redcoat flankers can come in and potentially save the day. Now these redcoat flankers over here, uh, well they seem to actually be doing a pretty good job. Look at this. They are wiping out droves of these French bays and killing a lot of them before they even get reached. So that's pretty good. I, I think we have had a few redcoat deaths. A few of these guys are bloodied on the battlefield, so they've been getting stabbed a little bit at the very least. Um, but it, it seems as though they are fighting off these hordes of bayonet chargers. 
these uh, basically suicide chargers right here, <laughs> which is kind of crazy. Just the sheer number we've got on the battlefield. Um, at the moment, we do already have 300,000 French soldiers dead and almost 16,000 redcoats dead. So the redcoats are not invincible in this battle at all. They, they are taking losses. They are taking some L's going forward here. Uh, but, I mean, the ratio speaks for itself. They're doing quite well. Let's go over to the other side, the other flanking units over here. And it looks as though these guys are also being able to mow down a number of these Frenchies. However, they are taking more losses than I think the other flank was taking. These guys seem to be actually connecting with the British soldiers causing those losses, and uh, that's going to be a rip-rip potato chip for a large number of these British soldiers. So, uh, it's interesting. I think we have given them enough French soldiers that they could potentially win this battle. I think it is entirely possible that the, the French soldiers do end up winning this battle. They've got enough. They do have enough. But, of course, the Redcoats, they've got that firepower, and I think... Uh, you know, the fact that this defense over here is already doing so well, and the flanks are doing so well, uh, that these guys could also end up catching a dubski for themselves. I, I think we we really will have to find out in, in due time. It's, it's not going to be a fast process here. So why don't we go ahead and speed it up a little bit by doing a time lapse over this way. Of course, I will keep the data at the top right there if you want to check how many kills and how many troops are remaining for each side. Uh, right now, Team 1 is going to be the Redcoats and Team 2 is the French. So enjoy that as you will. Either way, guys, please be sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and comment down below. Let's get into an overhead time lapse of the defense here. Alright, over the last five minutes, we did see that outer line capitulate against the bayonet fighters. And already the second line is getting in eaten into way, way faster, which is not good. Um, there is actually a small holdout over here. Surprisingly enough, these guys are just still chilling and firing away. Got a buddy. Um, but yeah, that, that outer line just ended up going down, and this inner line is a lot smaller than that outer line, meaning these guys are probably going to go down a lot faster, and we're already seeing evidence of that going in. Maybe these corners will last a little bit longer, because again, the corners are a little bit more reinforced than the other side. So it's really going to be dependent, I think, on the reinforcements. Let's check out how these guys are doing. I'm seeing blue over there. I am seeing shots over here. Okay. We've still got the reinforcements left alive, and there's actually a sizable number of them. But <laughs> they're really not being super effective, to be completely honest. There's a trickle in of French that are basically forcing these Redcoats to take care of them instead of going to support their boys. There's also quite a number of them over here coming about and stuff like that. But yeah, they are they are not currently exactly rushing to go and support the boys in the square formation right now. Not great. This is not very good. How about the other side? Maybe the other side's potentially going to be able to come over here. Because look at that. Already... The, the second line right there has broken, and now the square is actually getting eaten away at, uh, from now, four different sides. Yikes, those corners are still holding up a little bit, though, which is good, but it, this overall is very not good for them. They might die out before their reinforcements can even end up reaching them. Okay, these red coats over here, it looks like they've moved a little bit farther out, but they're, oh, they're taking a beating. There's a lot of bayonet soldiers up in here right now. Woo! There's a lot of Frenchies right now taking some swings, taking some stabs at this uh, flank line. So the flanks have not been able to push in at all. They're basically still at their starting positions right now, still having to deal with a whole ton of these French soldiers. So right now we are not looking like a good victory to actually support this center line over here. This center is going to get completely destroyed. Look at that. Uh, the corners are still alive, which makes kind of a cool little star fort shape almost. <laughs> That's kind of sick, actually. Um, but the rest of these soldiers are not looking too hot. They are looking like they are going to die very, very soon, which is not very good. Let's go ahead and do another time lapse here. Um, but yeah, I, I think this is going to be a big L for the middle part, because I don't think the reinforcements are going to be as supportive as we thought they might be.
All right, boys, we now have like an X formation here of the remaining red coats, which looks kind of sick. I'm not gonna lie, I don't know if it's the strategically best formation for these guys to be in for this kind of a fight, but hey, they, it's quite frankly what they got. <laughs> they, they don't have a lot going for them right now. No siree. Um, the flankers are still flunking, which is good, but but not not super well. Actually, are they? Wait, <gasps> they're moving down the hill. Wait, they could potentially get there in time, maybe? Oh, there's a whole batch of Frenchies right there. And then they got to go through these guys who are splitting off to go reinforce the flank. Okay, I, I, don't, I don't think this square formation is going to be saved in the slightest. No siree. Unless, by miracle, these flankers over here manage to get something done. Uh, they're coming out too, but like, yeah... There's a whole trickling of these French soldiers who are, who are coming at them. I, I think we are just going to be witnessing the destruction of this final bastion of uh, British defense right here. I think we'll get a win overall for the Brits, but I think the square formation will die. So let's go ahead and let that play out. The bayonet-wielding bozos have destroyed the Redcoat army right here, uh, and the remaining Redcoats are swinging on in, but it was just a little too late. Um, I'm hoping they can still maybe win this thing. There's still 130,000 Redcoats left alive. That's quite a bit, but there is still a million bayonet soldiers left alive as well, which again is also quite a bit. Right now, the Redcoats have killed 1.5 million, and the uh, Bayonet soldiers have killed 141,000 Redcoats. So, pretty good numbers. Redcoats definitely winning overall. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, still, it's a pretty tight race. It's about 10 kills per Redcoat, I think, right? Yeah, something something along those lines, which, is, which isn't, like, the craziest stat we've ever seen in this game. We've seen, like, 1,000 kills per soldier for, like, the modern soldiers and things like that, but hey... 10 is good enough. That'll that'll win them the day if, if they want it bad enough. Uh, oh, down here is kind of bad, actually, for the Redcoats. Do they have more backup somewhere? Oh, they have more over here. Okay, yeah, but this little section got kind of caught out here. Oh, and there's more right here, too. Yeah, the, these guys over here might end up dying. <laughs> they might not live super duper long, but we shall see. Why don't we go ahead and do a few more time lapses to round off this video, because I think that's a fun way of showing off a long form battle, and we can check out as these uh, red coat flankers get into varying situations on the battlefield. We just witnessed another red coat downfall. Uh, which has got me a little bit nervous. My dog just bored a little bit. Stop, no, no bork. Why you, why you bork? This is not the bork time. No. <laughs> All right, so this tunnel over here is perfectly fine. They're doing, they're doing swell over here. Over this way, they're getting caught in the back, which is not good in the slightest. That's, that's gonna be dangerous going forward. And it looks like the rest of these French boys have pushed back these flankers, oh god, this is really bad. Look at this. These guys are entirely surrounded. Yeah, they're all gonna die, like for sure. Are there any other supporters? No, that's it. Oh no, over here, oh, oh, we got a wall of redcoats over here. But eventually they'll get flanked too. Because these guys are gonna lose, they'll go down that mountain, then come up the rear. Oh, right in the butthole. This is not good. This is like really bad actually for the redcoats. We could see a red coat loss here. Um, I think this is going to be the most interesting area to watch. So let's time lapse this area of these guys getting eaten away by bayonets. So it looks like the red coats actually managed to break free from this, which is kind of crazy. And now they're just hunting down some last remaining Frenchies over this way. Uh, and it looks like we've also got groups heading this way towards these French soldiers over here who are still engaging 
Only with the small resistance worth of British soldiers. Let's see. Yeah, but these guys are completely surrounded now. Whew. This is going to be a hard one. Let's time lapse it and see what happens. For the past hour or so, these two sides have basically just been chasing each other around these canyons, and it ends up with a French soldier victory! I'm shocked! There's only 89,000 French soldiers left, so that that's not a lot. If there was just 9,000 remaining British, they'd be able to take them out, but they weren't. My goodness. This, this was insane, dude. This, this literally went in almost every nook and cranny of this battlefield. <laughs> absolutely mind-boggling either way guys if you did enjoy this video please be sure to hit that like button subscribe if you haven't already and comment down below i'll see you on the next one peace i hope you guys enjoyed that video be sure to click that subscribe button for more content and hit the notification bell if you'd like to be alerted to whenever i live stream or upload thanks so much